With the rapid expansion of the WISE system and the ever-growing user base of smart things, there's no question I see more often than how do I get WISE and Samsung smart things working together. Well, today I'm going to show you how to do that reliably and effectively. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and today I'm going to take the frustration out of automation by helping you connect the very, very inexpensive Y system with the extremely powerful and well-connected Samsung SmartThings system. Now there's a couple of things you have to know before you go forward with this. Number one, the Y system, I just have to be honest. It's going to unpair if you don't locate the WISE camera with the bridge close to a Wi-Fi system. So if you're going to be using the WISE Sense sensors to trigger on automation or to trigger automation in smart things, then you're going to want to make sure that the WISE bridge and that camera is close to a very strong wireless signal. On the smart thing side, you're going to have to be comfortable with the idea of creating what are essentially variables, but they are are called virtual switches inside of Samsung smart things now don't be scared this isn't a hard thing and the concept isn't difficult once you just kind of teach yourself the basics of it here so as we go through the tutorial I'll make sure you understand about virtual switches we're going to start in the classic smart things application and you do have to start in there now I've headed to automation and you can see my virtual device creator already there but what you're going to do if you've never done this is add a smart app head down to more tap that and down at the bottom again is the virtual device creator once you tap on that you're able to create either a switch or a dimmer switch now for most of the purposes here with Y you're only going to be able to use the switch really now we're going to name the device and hit done and save and that's pretty much it from the creation of a virtual switch now once in the my home section of the application you can see I can scroll down to Y switch one that's the virtual switch I created and I can simply tap on the switch itself to actually turn it on and off now there is also the smart app section where I can see nothing has been done with that there's one thing we have to make sure of in the automation and smart app section I have to go into my if this then that smart app and if you don't have that you'll have to add that web app as well from the list but once you've gone into here you can see which switches and you might just want to leave this as all switches but I tend to manage these things directly and I've just gone in and chosen my Y switch one now this is also the same way that you manage between Google Home and Amazon's voice assistant as well so if you want to do that later now just to show you in the new application if I want to create virtual switches in that application from this point out I can go into the menu go into automations and scroll down and you will see your virtual devices creator there now and you can go ahead and create any virtual switches you'd like there as well now that you've created your very first virtual switch you can go ahead and create these again and again for different integrations with other products as well it's not just wise here now we're going to go to a website called if this then that if you don't have an account you'll have to sign up and if you haven't already I'm assuming most of you have connect your wise and smart thing services to if this then that now as you go through the process of creating the applet here that I'm about to show you then you will be asked to connect those accounts so you don't really have to worry if you haven't done this already the big part of the process is really just setting up that account now in if this then that let's go ahead and create a new applet let's hit this and we're going to search for smart things because again we're trying to use this virtual switch to trigger on wise components and we're just going to trigger on a light here but you can see when I choose switched on from the list of different triggers that I can now find that wise switch one and I've also created a dimmer switch one just to show you both will show up and can be used now once I go to the that section of the applet here I'm going to 
choose wise and I have a number of different choices that I can make here. So we can go ahead and turn on the devices. So those are cameras. We can enable and disable motion detection, start a recording, or we can turn on and off bulb set brightness and set color temperature. So you could go ahead and create multiple applets if you'd like to set the temperature and the color of your bulb. But for now, I'm just going to turn it on. The other thing to keep in mind is you're likely to have to create a couple of these. So when that Y switch one turns off, you probably want to create an applet that turns off this bulb. And you can see I'm just using the tester bulb. So what we've successfully done here is through a virtual switch that we could configure and turn on a number of different ways in SmartThings, we've gone ahead and turned on a wise bulb. What I hope is clear right now, you know, I've paired this remote from IKEA with my Samsung Smart Things. I could use this remote from AOTech that I have paired as well. I could use any number of different sensors within my Smart Things platform. It doesn't just have to be a motion sensor or a contact sensor. It can be a lot of different things to trigger automation on the Y side. Now, I showed you with bulbs on that side, but you could also trigger on and off cameras, you can trigger them to start a cloud recording, and you have a lot of options there in If This Then That for different capability. But what if you wanna go the opposite way and you wanna trigger using some of these very inexpensive devices from Wise, you want to trigger automation in smart things. Well, the first thing we're going to have to do is create a virtual switch again for this direction. So we're going to call this virtual switch Wise Door Sensor 1, and I'm going to go ahead Ahead and utilize this within what is essentially a reversal of the applet we just created but then I'm going to show you how to do a ton more that's why this Sono speaker is sitting over here and we can do a ton more with this system over to if this then that this is where we go ahead and we take wise and its switch or its motion detector or its contact sensor in this case we go ahead and we use that so I'm using the what's called the secret event sensor that's a wise sense that you saw me hold up here in the video and now I'm choosing to go to smart things and this is where we're actually going to switch on something so again you're going to have to create a second applet to switch off the virtual switch as well if you'd like to really manage this so you can see I'm turning on the wise door sensor one and I'm creating that action and now I have once again created integration between smart things and wise now within smart things when that virtual switch comes on which is really just a mirror of this as that comes on we can trigger a number of auto other automations we can just go ahead and create more and more automations within smart things so you can use virtual switches to trigger on your speaker to say that the wise door sensor was open just like this inside of the new smart things application i'm just going to show you a couple of things here that are important now inside of automations i can create a custom automation i can hit add and now I can go and choose that wise door sensor virtual switch that we use to trigger when we actually open that contact sensor all the way back in the wise application. Now I can also add additional conditions if I'd like. So I can even add in security mode. I can add in the location mode. I could also add in other devices if I'd like to check their status. And then as an action, what I can do is I can notify members now what you're noticing is the audio notification is not possible here with the Sono speaker that I have connected the only two types of speakers you can use are Bose and Samsung connect now inside of the classic application I'm just showing you in the marketplace in smart apps there's the speaker companion capability and this is how I get access to my Sonos for now it won't work for long so don't rely on this if you have a Sonos you're going to need that Bose or Samsung Connect speaker unfortunately now you can see I chose a custom message and I can play the message I would like to over 
any of my speakers that are connected. So I'm going to go ahead, tap my TV room. That's what my Sonos is called. And then I'm going to choose the switch that turns on. So again, we're going to choose that WISE door sensor one that came all the way from the WISE application. And I could set additional triggers if I wanted to. So I could have motion sensors having to be on. This is one of the more powerful traits of smart things. I can set multiple conditions no matter where I am. Now I can also set more options. So if I wanted to, I can pick a different voice to come out and say it and of course I'm going to choose Brian but there's also other options here for me to set with that speaker. Once I've assigned a name to this whole speaker companion, I'm calling it the Wise Door Sensor Notification. I hit save and it will show up in all of my automations list now. I can also test it if I'd like by hitting that play button. Here's what you get when that door sensor opens. Wise door sensor open. You can also, through what is a bit of a workaround for the home security system, utilize this as a home security sensor. Now, this is extremely powerful, but it's non-traditional or it's not native functionality. So you're going to get some different notifications with this kind of a setup. Now, this is where the new Samsung SmartThings application becomes so important. We're going to add an automation and I'm going to choose custom automation our if status or our first condition is that wise door sensor we want it to trigger when that is on and then I'm going to add additional conditions so we're going to choose that the security mode is away and you can see I can only choose one either away or stay so you'll have to make two of these automations if you'd like this notification to trigger in both of those security modes now I'm going to select devices as well so if I'd like I could turn on lights I could turn on different things within my home I could also lock doors and, and do all kinds of things here but for now I'm just going to turn on a light just for the purposes of a demonstration and we're also able to delay or auto turn off or dim the bulbs here in this case so you get quite a bit of control now on top of that if I'd like I can notify members in a number of different ways. The audio notification we know doesn't work just because of the type of speaker I have, but if you had one, you could notify members with that. You can also send a message, and this is what you're going to see on your smartphone that is connected with smart things. So this gives you the notification that you would normally get anyways through your security monitor. As long as you've got that security monitor and armed away in, in this specific case then you're going to get a notification that someone's come through your door and use that wise sensor From here guys, I think it's pretty clear that you can create almost any automation with just these little virtual switches that Samsung has so smartly given us access to. That's really the trick here today and ultimately it allows you to create all kinds of automation here. Now, up on screen is a specially created playlist for utilizing Samsung SmartThings and your WISE system together. It will give you all kinds of ideas how to integrate these products. Now, Otherwise, guys, thanks for watching, and of course, don't hate, automate.